Welcome back to another episode of this YouTube series. You've caught me having a wee sing along there in my P. Diddy jag. I got a brand new just for this video. H&M Finest. I think it was like £30. Absolute fucking steal. Oh, please refill your ad blue. So there's the start of the video. But yeah, if 30 quid, you couldn't beat it. If you shop as a man, Zara, H&M, even some of the clothes in Tesco can be quite nice. It's not all just about designer labels. I think sometimes big labels aren't the freshest anymore. There's something just about them that I think puts it slightly off it. Now, we thought we'd film this. We're going down to my friend Helmy's gym now to shoot some content for Instagram. We're gonna shoot like a full month's worth of exercise tutorials. So these are gonna be, you know, different bicep movements, training, a wee bit more quick, sharp, snappy, just to change up my Instagram content. Cause we're, we're, we've done talking videos, we've done tutorials, but we haven't done any where I haven't talked. So I'm gonna try and make them like six, seven, 10 seconds, really give as much value as possible in that time period. Uh, so people can refer back to it. And with the algorithm changing as well, with people getting used to content, you wanna give them something to see, you wanna give them something different and try and teach them as fast as possible. So that short form works really well. And it's, it's the small things, like it's Sunday evening here and see whenever you're running your own business and this isn't me being like the grind, it's not. It's just like, for example, I usually take like a Monday morning off, uh, but sometimes I do have to work like a Sunday. So for example, I'll have to drive an hour down to Belfast here, film for two to three hours and then we'll uh, drive back. So that is my Sunday evening, which most people will be like, for fuck's sake. But at the same time, I get to pick my own hour. So if I want to take a Tuesday over a Wednesday, I can. Uh, and since we're dieting quite hard now in prep, I've taken the energy where I can get it. See, during the week, I am like a fucking wet lettuce. I am dead of the world. So it's one of these things where right now I saved all my caffeine. It's rest day. I knew I'd have a little bit more energy. Calories are quite low. Uh, I'm still running meal plan. I'm not tracking. I'm scared to actually look at the fucking calories. It's just fuck all carbs. Fuck all. Just living on cauliflower rice and dark soy sauce at the minute. So I'm just eating an obscene amount of edge. I think in the last meal there I had like beetroot, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, green peas, sweet corn, red onion, tomatoes, and I had normal onions. So I had 10 veg in my last meal. Now I didn't have obscene portions, just a small handful of each. Anybody that says they get hungry during a deficit is just simply not eating enough veg. And if your coach makes you track veg, they're fucking psychotic. I've never tracked veg, never will. Would rather come dead last in a show than track the veg. I think it's absolutely ludicrous. If you're weighing your asparagus, it's bad enough to weigh your chicken, it's bad enough to weigh all your food. To weigh your asparagus, you are one sad little motherfucker, and that's just a straight fact. So if your coach tells you to weigh your veg, tell them to suck your fucking hurry nuts. Hey, we're trying to build healthy habits, so if your coach ever punishes you for fucking eating veg, it's not wise. If we are gonna do a show, I'm um, pretty much announcing it, like probably like seven, eight weeks in a minute, uh, so six, maybe six weeks in a peak week. I'm trying to count the days rather than fucking, people say, don't count the days, make the days count. I'm counting the fucking days because the diet and starting to feel the pinch now. Steps are quite high, cardio's been taxing. I'm gonna have to cut out the MMA because it's been so taxing uh, on my body because high intensity cardio is just not the one when you're dieting. It just fries your CNS, your central nervous system, and it impacts your recovery. And it's just something that you wanna be very mindful of, whereas like the bike, treadmill, uh, Stairmaster steps, low intensity, it's gonna save your muscles, save your energy for your lifts. You're not gonna use that glucose, the carbs you have. Like for example, if I go and do MMA, like that's gonna use so much of my carbs I need from weight, so you can be drained the next day. So, and I think as well, like a mental game, like see when you know that, like I know, right, if I eat here and then I have MMA and then I'm not eating again to here and then I have weights, I'm only got so much energy for that. So it's also a mind game. But I'm getting real lulls with energy, so that's how I know I'm getting leaner than before. I haven't really felt like this in a long, long time. I haven't felt as shit as this, to be honest. So I'm always cold, so I must be getting lean. And I'm always sort of food focused, and I'm just noticing I'm way more, like my legs, I wake up and I'm heavy, like my legs are tired. Not complaining. I just know that I'm getting leaner because I'm pushing harder. It's lowest calories I've been in years, highest steps I've been in years, highest cardio has been. And it's not even that high compared to some diet and phases, but when you've got quite a large amount of tissue, it's strange how that expenditure, that calorie range feels fucking tight. See with the diet and you can't get to somewhere you've never been if you don't do something you've never done. So for me to get as lean as I want, I need to bring my legs in and they're just starting to come and this is where it really sucks. But I'm doing it to myself. Like I'm not being like, ooh, and it's such a first world problem. Like I feel like it's a real good confidence builder. You're doing something that you almost think is out of your reach. Like it's, it's very taxing running the businesses along with everything going on in the family and that. And then on top of that, doing the show, there's so many plates spinning that uh, I just know it'll help build confidence. And whenever you want to build your confidence, your self-discipline is the way to do that. The only way you build your confidence is through keeping your promises and 
outworking your self-doubt. So I think that's probably the best thing to do. So instead of me being worried about what could, should I, am I going to be look good, am I going to be lean, just outwork it, stick to the plan. And whenever you put in the work, you're guaranteed a result. The main reason people have issues is because they doubt the plan so much they never put in the work. Whereas whenever you put in that much work, you'll just outwork your self-doubt and that's absolutely key. My mouth is like Gandhi's flip-flop, so we're going to pull into the apple green, get a wee beverageino. Don't know what I'll take. See, I'm going to be doing these videos with my top off, so I probably can't even have a dad drink, so I'm probably going to get like flavoured water or something. Shite. Hello, hello. Right, so we are back at the, well, we're not back. We're just pulled in, going to Apple Green to break up this video. So we're giving thoughts here, but pretty much I've got all my meals set out. I have to do that three to four hour fast in the morning. So I'm going to believe it later because it was Sunday. I got up at like eight because I had that coma. So I didn't start eating till 11, but normally my meal times, I get up at six. My meal times are like 11, one, four, seven, nine. Now, I should start pushing that last meal further, like closer in together. But, but what I'm doing is I have chocolate oats and stuff, and now I'm gonna show you a video for that. It's literally all I'm living for. Like, it's, it's literally all I have. So we're gonna get decaf coffee because things are a bit mental. You wanna follow me to the toilet? Yeah, you need, you need, you need to zoom in more for the wee, for the wee man. Takeaway cups is A1, yeah, no better. Thought we'd break up the video and do a little bit of an apple green, and I'm gonna give you a couple key tips that you're gonna really find useful for that, and that I think are just a game changer. I implement with myself, all my clients, the minute you start dieting. So, number one begins before you start that. It's don't use too much caffeine whenever you're bulking or whenever you're pushing up. See, whenever you're dieting, you wanna be able to be actually not used to stimulants because caffeine reduces appetite, raises heart rate, sort of helps you burn a little bit more calories. And on top of that, whenever you think about it, that's everything you want during a deficit. And what I find is if you fast in the morning and use caffeine, it's a lot easier to stick to your diet. Whereas if you use up all your calories during the day and end up with fuck all at night, that's the time you're most likely to break watching tally. So number one, caffeine in the morning. That leads into point number two, pre-planning your meals. Like I said, try and fast a little bit in the morning. It's nothing special about fasting. It's just, you're more likely to break that later in the day. So pre-planning meal times, so you're not hungry is key. And that actually means planning a rough game plan of meals to actually fucking do your day. If you're tracking macros, you're gonna have a nightmare because whenever, as the day gets tougher, you're gonna find you're hungry without structure. So structure will be absolutely key and save you energy drain trying to think of meals and wasting calories on too big meals too low. So you'll be able to spread things. Number three, load your fucking veg. As I was saying, if your coach makes you track veg, they're fucking psychotic. Nobody wants to weigh their asparagus. We're trying to build healthy habits, not destroy somebody's fucking eating lifestyle because they have to weigh fucking carrots. Like what the fuck? So load the veg, cauliflower rice is gonna be the king. 20 calories a packet, I don't even track it. Use a pack of that with most meals. Yes, it might be like 80 calories or 60 calories over the day. That's not gonna break the bank, but you fucking having two Mars bars because you're hungry and then still being hungry after will. So that's three key tips that are absolute game changers. Number four would be try and keep your carbs before and after your workouts. The reason being is because it's gonna fuel your workouts. Once you start to lose strength, it's not a good sign. Now, in the deeper stages of dieting, you might lose a little bit because as you get lighter, you lose stability, pushing, leg movements, all that comes into play because they're so taxing. But what you really wanna do is you wanna limit the strength that you lose by fueling yourself before and afterwards. Say you fuel yourself in the morning with carbs and then train later that night. Yes, the carbs might saturate, but the problem is if you walk loads during that day, you're gonna start using up them carbs without realizing it. And then it's gonna affect your session. So timing your actual food sources is really, really key. I think as well, number tip number five would be make sure you're having enough protein. Protein is the one that's gonna fill you most and this sort of leads into more points. Foods that fill you most, don't be wasting your calories and sugar shite. I take away all that whenever I start dieting. Yes, it probably doesn't help because of flexible dieting. Trust me, I'd rather have cravings than being hungry. Hungry sucks balls. So for example, I'll not have granola, I'll have oats. I'll not have cereal post-workout, I'll have oats or something that's filling like potatoes and chicken and rice or potatoes and meat and veg. And you might be like, oh, well, that's not right. See, whenever you're dieting hard enough, all you want is to be full. Whenever you're really full, you're not gonna break that. So I'm using the right food choices. If you look at the satiety index, the highest ones that keep you fullest for longer are red meats, potatoes, oats, lean fish, you know, stuff that actually keeps you full. And they're usually relatively low in calories for the weight. So you do get a large amount of potatoes versus pasta, which isn't gonna keep you full for long. And that's the key is using the right changes. Now there's loads more diet and tips you can use, but there's five that are gonna massively help you. We are gonna lock and load, go down to film a bit more, but I want to give you five key tips in a wee bit more in depth that I think are pretty much the game changers for me there. And I think that's a real overview of like how I've even managed to get lean. It's, it's so simple. It's just managing your hunger, managing your actual meals day to day, picking the right foods, 
it's actually really the basics. But the problem is most people start getting lazy on these. They start trying to prep meal to meal. They don't have them prepped. And then it stresses you out because you're always cooking. Whereas I prep all my meals three, four days in advance. And yes, do the taste is nice? No, but they're still tasty. You can always air fry them back up to heat in three, four minutes. Versus, see, prepping meals constantly, cleaning and cooking, you're just wasting energy. And a lot about that and is actually pretty much the final tip would be energy management, not wasting energy on stupid shit. Uh, we will drive to Halmines, we'll film this content, but we'll pretty much wrap that video with just some key tips there for hunger. And that should help you dad a little bit easier. And if you want any more videos on bulk and cutting, we'll maybe do some on that next. It's just more relatable whenever I'm actually dating. And as usual, make sure you like, you share to your story, and you subscribe. Yes, thank you very much.